Um, and, and so what, what do we do? What, what do we do with, with winter manure? And, and really, uh, one, of the, one of the scenarios that we, we have to at least, at least look at is that sometimes it's best not to spread. There, there are certain days, certain weather patterns, certain landscapes uh, that, 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 that you really ought to just keep, keep the manure in storage. But if you really do have to get something out, we need to start looking at, at uh, where on our farm is the least risky place to spread. Um, the, the same is true with, with dairy, daily haul scenarios. Uh, we, we need to figure out uh, how to pick the, the least risky fields and also if, if the need uh, arises, figure out the best place to, to create some type of a stockpile of, of the manure. Because we know that, that runoff is going to happen, uh, especially in the month of March. Manure storage scenarios where, where the, the, uh, the liquid, liquid manure is, is uh, at full capacity and, and it's going to start to overtop, you've you got to find a place to, to go with it. I mean, when, when, when someone says you, you can't spread, you, you, just, I mean, you, you show them, i got to spread. Uh, and, and so at that point, you, you figure out where on your farm is, is the least risky place to go. Uh, the, the same is true with daily haul. And so where, where and when are, are the, the, the two key pieces to this whole scenario? Winter, winter manure spreading, where, where are you going to spread it, and, and when are, are you going to try to get it, get it all out there? <clears throat> and so when you think about your farm or, or the, the landscape in, in general, um, how, does, how does your farm sit on, on, the, on the world and interact with the water cycle, uh, where are the streams, where are uh, the, the fields on your farm that are, that are most risky for, for runoff. And, and you know where they are. They're, they're the closest ones uh, to, to the stream. Uh, they're the steeper ones. And you want to find and identify these least risky uh, fields uh, and the least risky uh, time period and if you do need to spread winter manure, have, have a plan. Have a plan for, for how, it, how, it, how it goes. And here's an example, uh, a, a map uh, of a farm. And it can be any farm. This, this, is, this is a contour-stripped, uh, hillier farm in Wisconsin. We've got a stream coming through. There's a, there's a little bit of a dam and a pond here. And, and so we know that, that these fields that are closest to the stream and in, the, in this scenario, they're actually the, the steeper fields. They're, they're the most risky for, for runoff. Uh, if you spread there and we get some type of a heavy rain event, uh, they're going to, they're going to uh, contribute some version of nutrients into the water system. We also know that there's other fields as you work your way up the hill and even get to the top where, where it, 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 we're far enough away from the stream and, and the slope has actually leveled off and, and sort of dropping the other way here, that they, they, they really are the fields that are least, the, the least risky during the most risky time period. And so we, we take a look at, at wanting to save, save those fields for later on in the winter. We, 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 we spread, spread the, uh, the more risky fields first, and, and save these guys for later. And wh where are the risky fields on your farm? You, you know where they're at. Uh, you know wh where the steeper fields are, where the, where the fields are that are closer to uh, wetlands or streams. Or, uh, and, so, and so if you're going to uh, spread winter manure, spread those fields first. Spread them, spread them in, in, in October, November, December. Uh, get them spread first uh, because the, the way that winter, winter comes upon us, the, the freezing and thawing cycle uh, of that initial frost and the first snowfall or two uh, sort of comes and goes and it, it works its way to you know, cold, warm, cold, warm. And the manure that you do get spread on those more risky fields is going to ultimately uh, come into better contact with the soil. 
and with the crop residue, and you know, it, it, you're going to get that interaction with, with the land as opposed to that, that manure sitting up in the snowpack somewhere. <clears throat> so spread those risky fields early. Uh, and, and again, we, we know that they're the ones that are closer, closer here to the water. And then the non-risky fields, make sure you save them. So save, save yourself a, a field uh, or two. You, you know how many acres uh, you need to be spreading uh, per week or per day or, or whatever it might be in, a, in the month of March. Uh, know how much manure you might need to be spreading and, and save, make sure to save a field that really is less risky uh, for, for the runoff that's going to happen. So as, as we start to uh, uh, close out this session, uh, the things that you need to know about, about winter manure spreading is that, is that you really should reserve a few fields in, uh, in your back pocket uh, that are least risky for, for that application. Uh, spread, the, spread the really risky fields uh, first and just know that sooner or later uh, as, as the winter progresses and, and transition to spring occurs that runoff is going to happen. And so the, the way that you do have winter manure out there uh, will have some version of an impact on, on the water quality as it leaves as it leaves uh, uh, during the early part of spring. We talk a lot about, in, in Wisconsin, we're, we're, we're starting to talk about critical, the, the, we use the word critical, critical landscapes, critical conditions, critical time periods within the, the weather cycle. And just being, being aware that, that um, we really are banking 90 plus percent of all of the precipitation that falls and, and it's uh, very little, 10% or less, that's actually running off. And that amount that is running off is really only running off in, in a critical time period from, from critical spots on the land. And so the more that you can just sort of like infuse in your mind how to look at your land with, with, with those types of glasses, uh, critical spots and critical times uh, when the runoff does occur, uh, the decisions that you've that you've made uh, will will lead to cleaner water, and day to day decisions do matter. Um, we're gonna just jump right right here. This this is the end. Uh, day to day decisions matter. This this story is is a, a farm in western Wisconsin, uh, dairy dairy liquid manure uh, operation. Uh, the the custom manure applicator. I gave the guy a call uh, and said, I'm, I'm here, uh, I'm, in, I'm in the general neighborhood. Uh, I know that you're part of my, my fall uh, uh, custom list. Um, you want me to sneak in and uh, I, can, I can do a couple of days, but then I, I really am committed uh, uh, down the road for, for at least two more weeks. Before so my said, well, I totally need to get some some out. Uh, why don't you? Why don't you come on in? And so they spread. And they started spreading. They spread one whole day. The guy packed up and went down the road. And the, the very next night, uh, it rained. It rained uh, like like an inch and a half of rain. <clears throat> on this farm, we had two different spots where we were monitoring the water. Uh, one field, the, the field that he spread was one of the monitoring fields. The other, uh, another one wasn't. And this, this is the result. Got, got brought up into the, into the surface water runoff and, and totally filled up our, our uh, bottle uh, from that site uh, where, where it didn't appear. And, and I think that the, the, the lesson becomes that, that some type of a look uh, into the weather forecast uh, weather forecasts aren't always a hundred percent. We know that, but but my guy my guy shouldn't shouldn't have probably spread as as, as quickly and a, a, a snap of a of a finger decision uh, as as what he did, and and in the end uh, he ended up ended up uh, with some manure down in the water. 
That's the end of, of my presentation. Uh, critical conditions, critical uh, weather patterns, uh, critical spots on the land. If, as soon as you start to try to put a better understanding of those concepts onto, onto your land, uh, winter manure spreading, uh, you, you can begin to manage the risk involved with winter manure spreading. Yes. Both, both, and 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 so one of the farms that's represented in in the the whole lineup of farms that I showed, uh, we we um, uh, plan uh, sort of a, a, a worst case scenario. It, it, it's a, a a beef feedlot guy, uh, and so he doesn't normally spread uh, in the month of March. He does a lot more stockpiling, uh, but we we asked him go ahead and spread. We, we told him, we, we want to see what happens. And so he spread the beef uh, feedlot manure uh, like two weeks before uh, the, the big spring melt. And, and he also um, is, is right down the road from a big dairy where he was able to uh, do some, some business with the dairy and get another field spread with liquid dairy manure uh, at the same time period. And, and as the runoff happened, both, both showed up in the water. Nitrogen and phosphorus content in that water, surface water runoff was, was, was higher uh, than, than it could have been. And so, and so the manure consistency uh, and, the, and, the, and the, the species of animal that it comes from, at, at least uh, in, in the, the, the scenario of, of cattle, uh, didn't matter.